to GoPro. Yeah, I became a pro when I was, for, so to picture that, I became a pro in 2004, a really small team. Mm -hmm. uh, like, uh, not even, yeah, like, not like rally, but smaller. You yeah, know, rally small cycling, team, they right? still do bigger races. Yeah, so yeah. Euro Lottery, which was a small team. The second year was Shimano, 2005. The only race I did together with Lance Armstrong was uh, was a criterium just after the tour when he brought Sheryl Crow. I, I remember that as a day, <laughs> but that was like that was like an, still that I was a pro, but Lance Armstrong and Michael Bogert and th there was a different world, you know. It was totally. totally I, I met them at a kid, but I did uh, small races, you know. So I never expected to to race to even race the Tour de France, you know, and then, yeah, then I became better. I started to do some good climbs and then I became in the Rabobank team. And of course, I remember when I entered that team and that team was racing the Tour de France, I was like, okay, I also want to do that. But uh, yeah, it came gra more gradual. So, so the, the, and actually I was, I, I count myself lucky because of that, because of course, when I came became pro, it was a dirty area. But it, like I say, it was a different world for me. I was in a smaller team and, and those small. And I also told people like every year I was making more money. So for me, the incentive to also use was was not there, you know. Because I saw, like I said, I started cycling because I wanted to explore the world. And I was racing in Australia. It was my first race, two down under, mm. you know. And uh, it was not to win races, basically, but also but to explore and to get the best out of myself, yeah. Mm, that's awesome. What's you? When was it that you decided not to start? You stopped using the power meter and had. And I can't remember yeah. it was on Ted's podcast. Was, when, yeah, it was one year. You so were just like I, I, I told you I had a bad year in 2015, but the yeah. year, the other bad year was 2010. Okay, and it was also a little bit too much. Like I said, too much ride fast. You know, like. Uh, uh, 2007, I purchased the uh, SRM system, my first mm -hmm. power meter. You know, I started to experience it, with it, but I think you know yourself. The first time you have the thing on, it's like it's just a number flipping around, and you're like, okay, what the fuck, you know? Like, I don't know, yeah. I don't know what. So, but then I started to know it, and I got some good results with it, and I did some intervals. But at, you know, the first year was just tracking, and like, okay, oh cool, I did 400 watts for 20 minutes, okay, but doesn't know what it means mm -hmm. and but then in 2010 i was also injured and i just it's a little bit the same as with a cycling computer and you want to come home with the average of 30k an hour you know so mm -hmm. i always wanted to come home with a high average watts and basically you always did great training like zone two or whatever you call it but mm -hmm. Like, not really fast, not really slow, but mm -hmm. just to keep the average watts high, you know, yeah. just focused on the, the power meter. And then going up the hill at 340 in altitude stage, well, it would be better to go 20 minutes for 400 and then the rest 250. So I just readily said to the team, fuck it, I'm not using that thing anymore for 2011. I just had a small, back then it was a, yeah, we call it a cat eye or something. Cat eye, you know, this, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Just that with the with the stopwatch, and I still did forty twenty sitting standings, but just on the stopwatch, just by feel. And I think by the halfway the season, I had the most UCI points points I ever scored in one year. I became fifth at two down in the sixth at California, eighth at two the Swiss. You know, like everywhere I was in the point eleventh at, at Catalonia. And then afterwards, I started to work with it again. But then I knew to how to in, yeah how to use it as a training tool instead of a instead of something to 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 race against every day. So that's so interesting. I have a bunch of questions from that, but I think the thing is like especially now with everyone having power meters, and now with Zwift, and there's you know. Uh, computer programs out there that people will just ride inside and it's like watts, 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 watts the yeah. only thing that matters. And then people go to a bike race or a Grand Fondo and like it, they realize, oh, there's this whole thing called bike racing and it's not just how many watts I do. Do you think that there was like, you somehow reconnected with that bike racing part yeah. of the dance that we're doing when we go out to a race in 2011 it was as opposed to before maybe like the power meter just got you too focused on the training or 
So I was also in discussions with my teammates also back then. I remember uh, also before the year because they were still in that same thing and I was training without before two non under and they were training with. And they were dropped in the first stage, I remember, of two down under. But they were still bragging about the watch they did. Yeah. I was like, what the fuck? You dropped from a 50-man group. So it was not good today. Yeah. You know, yeah, but I did my PR for 20 or 2011. Uh. I said, yeah, but apparently 80 guys did a better watch, you know? So yeah. So so they always brag how many watts they are dropped. I was like, what the fuck? You know, <laughs> it's like, just try to stay. Yeah. Well- it's also, I mean, now we're, you know, to be fair to like to the current day amateurs that there's, you know, you can buy programs and they'll say like, hey, these are your watts per kg. This is where you stack up with people. This is how fast you are. And I'm like, you know, guys, that's when you warm up and you do one, you crank out one effort. Tell me the yeah. right place that you go to where you warm up for 20 minutes, you crank out one effort and you figure out if you win or lose. Like we yeah. got to get three hours down the road and then see what you can do. And yeah, yeah, exactly. those, it's, uh, I, I love power meters. I think they're awesome. I like the analytics, yeah, yeah, but course. I think people. Because to be fair, to be fair, uh, you know, I was, I was giving steady nice shit and Ted King shit that they were still training with a power meter after uh, their retirement, you know, like being, more more motivated than ever to win those gravel races while we retired but not, i must admit i ordered them uh two months ago also for my gravel bike and my mountain bike so <laughs> actually i'm totally back on the power meter track again you know like <laughs> and someone's gonna like secretly like paparazzi take pictures of you in a wind tunnel yeah with- no i i, I t- <laughs> so while i was while i was calibrating for the first time i text pete steady now like okay pete and he was like, oh, fuck, the guy is coming back. He's going to be serious. Because before I was, so basically it was also good for my head. You know, 2020 was because of Corona and all the racing got cut out. I was more, it was for me, it was more about bike packing with, uh, with mm-hmm. friends and having fun. And I organized Dirty Cancelled myself, you know, a big event here in Holland, you know, where everybody wrote Dirty Cancer from home. Okay. If it was, it, yeah, I think maybe 5,000 people worldwide did all that, you know, so and we made also a movie about it. It was really cool. But now, uh, now I, I yeah, now that the racing for me was basically my last race was Lombardi. Or th- then I did a grasshopper in January, 2020. It was the last race. So I'm uh, really looking forward to, to go back to racing. And, and I must admit, then it's also sometimes cool to have a power meter because normally I would have, time to measure myself every week with fellow competitors you know but now mm-hmm. it's just a power meter basically dude i'm i'm going to my first race and i'm like super scared because there's been a lot of people yeah. that have been racing for a year and i'm like dude I, I went to one group ride last week it was like yeah. my first human experience i have no idea what to expect yeah, but exactly. it's gonna be fun regardless what's so what are you doing for training these days i mean are in you can yeah play, you can play it off like you're just riding but if you want to give us the down yeah, I, I saw your question and i was thinking about it you know the thing is, compared to when I was pro, I have to juggle so many more things. Like I, have, like I told you, the events, the podcast, uh, the clothing, uh, stuff mm-hmm. like that. So the training is more limited. Mm-hmm. Uh, the training time is more limited. Uh, the kids at home. So I'm. Uh, so basically, where where before I could, I did more hours in the week. Now I would do more like three hour rides. You know, because then if you go from 8 to 11 in the morning, then you still got a, a day to be productive. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then maybe one really long one during the week where I plan everything free or I do my work at the, at night. So That's one, really seven, long, like, eight hour, so wow, six, okay. seven hour ride. Yeah, 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 yeah. So basically also to train for unbound. Okay. So and now I'm and now and I also did like more the the pyramid of uh, pyramid upside down. So more in the winter I did more like VO2 max stuff and, okay. and because it was all the shorter rides. Mm-hmm. And now towards unbound I do more more uh, endurance training and more tempo training. So last week I did for example my first 20 hour week since I don't know how many months, but okay. Whereas a 20 hour week would be an average week before, you know, so mm-hmm. that's, uh, that's the difference. Yeah. yeah. I, I cut down a volume and I did the intensity more high, which is 
pretty logical if you think about it. You know, if you go down in hours, you have to ride a little bit faster in hours you have. So uh, basically, my, th- my my and I also gained some weight. Okay. So I think uh, so. My the, my buddies here on the flat, they think I'm going faster than when I was a pro. But, but that's because I gained some weight and I do also more intense. Like yeah. you're e- you're eating those carbs and you're you've got a little bit more yeah, meat on those I just go fast, you know. I just have to burn them, you know. I don't. And before I was not eating carbs, so I would also last hour of the ride, I would go, uh, and now I'm always pushing till the end or try to. Live slow, drop your friends. That's the next yeah. tagline. <laughs> what? What's uh, <laughs> so? Uh, so you're doing the long rides, and then midweek, are you still riding endurance tempo there, or are you doing any intensity, or is it pretty much just hours now that you're getting ready for? Oh so, yeah, it depends. You know, like uh, I must admit, last for example, Monday I did a long one. I had the day off from work and uh, or from things to do and because i i own my own work so you know i, I can give myself the day off and uh, but there was a 250 kilometer one but I, then i that was like a hammer fest together with nikki turbstra and some other guys you know sick and uh there i effort for seven hours 250 watts which is <laughs> like yeah. yeah which is like more than six thousand kj you know totally so but then i think also i i won't do that every week because there you kill yourself, you know. So because also I knew for two days I don't train because I went with the kids to a campsite on holiday. I left the bike at home, so I could empty myself the day before. So I plan it uh, accordingly. Yeah. Have you ever heard of Gravel Worlds in Nebraska? I heard. I heard stories. Yeah, yeah. So, so. Uh, dude, super fun course. When is it? it? it uh, in August. Okay. Um, it's uh, two hundred fifty miles. But we did it in, I got dropped at like mile 130. I came in fifth. So for me, it was yeah. 730. We averaged okay. uh, 280 watts. It's wow. it's fast, dude. Like you're... Normalized or average? No, average. Oh, wow. I'm, I'm 82 uh... kg. So I'm, I'm yeah, probably okay, bigger okay. than you. Yeah. But dude, everyone's crushing like six, 7,000 kgs that day. It's yeah, just, yeah, yeah. there's, it's, they call it the Bohemian Alps. So it's just rolling. Like... But when you're going downhill and on gravel, you're still pedaling. There's like you're just gassing it all day. But it's um what yeah. It's a and what cool... do you eat then? What's that? What do you eat then? Um I do then I was doing uh probably a lot. I like gels, so I was probably doing a lot of yeah. gels, bars. Um Science and Sport had a bar that was made out of Malto that was like super easy to eat. Okay um then when i got dropped at the last station i got like a coke and they might have had candy or something but a race like that uh, how is the station do you have people in the pit or is it just from the organization okay so no it's a total shit show because what i've (laughs) learned is that you have to get one of those little boondoggle things or like the pipe cleaner so there's two stops that you have to make and when we rolled in the front group was like 50 dudes left and Um, we went to get the pipe cleaner and then you went to fill your bottles and people were taken off and I'm standing there like, dude, we're about to get dropped. So I took the top yeah. off the canteen and just dunked my bottle in it. It was like, yo, see, I'm out of here. <laughs> so we took off. I think the move would have been to maybe, I guess it is still do the bottles first. Cause I had a camel back, but I was trying to save that for like, if I couldn't get water but okay. yeah, you got to stop or two. You can't leave your own stuff on the side of the road. Um, so you have to stop at the rest station to, to, to fill the bottles. Mm-hmm. So okay, the okay. trick is you just got to go to the bottle station first and then. So you I have to like, sprint for the station. I might this <laughs> I'm next year. I might, I might. Cause I was like, <laughs> I didn't really think about it. It was, you know, no. cause the year before it was my first gravel race. And so everyone, it starts at 6 a.m. It's pitch black. We're going down these two, like this farm road. And there's like dust everywhere. It's not light out yet. I'm like, dude, this is chaotic. People are going to crash. So I just like kind of like buzzed off the front a little bit and thinking I'd like regroup with people in a few miles. But there's a guy, uh, Tim Mitchell, who's a notorious time trialist in the U.S. And uh, Colin Colin Strickland's teammate came up, um, old teammate, Michael Sheehan. So I'm like, screw it. I'm just going to ride with these dudes. Well, that turned out to be a bad idea by hour four. I was gassed. <laughs> and that's your Colin one because he, he caught the lead group after like a 10-minute flat. 
And he's like, that was heroic. And I was like, more like moronic. <laughs> so that year I had all the time in the world at the rest stations. I, I hadn't learned that trick of rushing. Yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, Don't, but you should think about it because it's a cool little city in Lincoln, Nebraska. And it would be, um, we ended up staying there last year just for a night because like they have cool coffee shops, bars, restaurants, which yeah. I didn't really expect for Nebraska. It's more known for like corn and cows and stuff here. So uh, normally in August, I'm now with the kids and we travel from San Diego to Colorado. So that would be <laughs> that would be way out. I that think. would be way but out. Maybe yeah. for 2022, uh, 20, we'll see. We, yeah, think about we it. We need there, to do another one. Uh, they're program. they're getting a lot of hitters back this year because last year it was the same weekend as SBT yeah. in Colorado and so a lot oh, of people okay. went to that. So you know now it's um, the weekend after maybe or something. It's a different weekend. Yeah, okay. I'm assuming because I, I saw like Colin Strickland's coming. There's other like big names coming okay, back cool. to it, which is cool. So okay, I'll look it up. What gravel worlds? Gravel worlds. Um, when you're talking about the gravel training now, what were you doing back in the day? What was like the meat of training when you think back to the Rabobank and earlier days? Yeah, like I said, the uh, medium week, uh, 20, 20 hours would be a lower week. Well, it's mm -hmm. now the highest week I've done so far. So it would be just shitload of endurance if I look back. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Do you yeah. like maybe one day of intensity and then you're just racing? Yeah. Yeah. So, so, Actually, you know, I, I was never a guy of, of all that structured interval stuff, you know. Basically, I had one training I was nervous for. Uh, I, no, I have to, two training, two, like, test training. One was in Limburg, was the Eiser Bosweg. I would go full, and then next to it would be another climb, and I would go mm. full, but sitting in the saddle. Okay. So and then on the top I would turn around and when I would do that both three times I was like this and I would crawl home you know like like how, totally. How long? And were then they I would in duration. Yeah. So the 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 the, the 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 one I was allowed to stand you know to do uh, standing in the bike was two minutes forty and the other one three minutes forty so. Yeah. Intense stuff Killing. and yeah. uh, you know and and I I knew when I was in good shape when I did the third time the same times as the first time because to go fast is easy but to go for three times with in a time span of 20 minutes or 25 minutes that's uh, that's the hard thing so that was the one I was nervous for but max three times a year I did that okay. so it was ne so for example uh, before the first race the week before the first classics. And maybe the week before the Tour de France, you know, just to test myself and my form. It's like the half. And half then half. another one was uh, in Turkey when I was living in Turkey would be uh, Donna Pass Road, okay. Donna Donna the, the climb, and yeah, I would do that. Uh, it's in between, I think, thousand nine hundred meters, so six thousand to seven thousand feet, roughly, uh, six thousand to seven thousand two hundred. Mm -hmm. uh, so high for me, and I, I would go up it twice as hard as I could. And it would be like a 14 minute, 400 watts effort on that altitude for 67 kilos when I was in tour shape. So that, and basically the rest was just, when I felt like, okay, here I'm doing power interval, I'm going to do a power interval. Here I'm doing sitting standing, I do sitting standing. Like the, the 350, 360 watt range, I would push that randomly in a training, you know, when I was feeling good, I would do it more. Uh, the power training I would always include myself I hated sprints maybe in hindsight I should have done them more but it's also when you train more on the sprints you would go slower on the mountains you know and I also want to do it because it's always a balance you know so so back in the days that I was not a not an interval guy maybe and now now I'm now I'm getting the help by because uh, for me a coach is is, is a little bit too much because I I kind of like to to schedule my own week and stuff like that, but I still like to uh, to to have help or to get triggered, you know, like mm -hmm. to do those sprints or to do the VO2 max interval. Or mm -hmm. so I use an app join, also, and uh, basically you can also put your availability in. So if 
today it was raining all day. I put the, the availability on zero and then to, 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 for the next week, it lays out down another schedule, you know, with the goal of inbound this year. So that helps me to, okay, today should be a fear too much day. And then I see five, five three, four times five minutes, but I can also do five times three minutes. I know what fear too much is, you know, mm-hmm. so that's what I, so, but I, I try to follow it roughly. Yeah. What's the app called? Join, join cycling. J O I N. It's kind of cool. Try, try it out. It's. Uh, I'm gonna look that up. That yeah. sounds cool. It's, What's, it's, it, it's you, made, you made two really good points that I think is great for people to hear about turning the dials of you know everybody wants to be like well I want to increase my FTP my VO2 max and my sprint and I'm gonna be good yeah. at everything and I'm like well okay so it, your body doesn't really work that way and oh. you can explain it to people but then also. The, you know, there's actually the guy, Alex Hutchinson, he wrote a book about running yeah. uh, Endure. He just posted an article that one of our coaches had posted in our WhatsApp chat, chalking and outlining re- repeatability where they, uh, they followed some U23 cyclists and just showing how the power degradation is much less for them on effort number four than on Johnny, who's a cat four cyclist. Yeah. And to yeah. help people see, it's not just this one max effort that matters. Like you got to go and, you know, in Lauren's half pipe of hell, yeah, we'll call exactly. it, going back and forth and feel like you actually did something on the last effort as opposed to being like, I'm effed, I have nothing left. It's like, okay, well, you need to work on that at that power and do it more times. But, yeah. you know, that's not as sexy to talk to your friends about at, at the no, water no, cooler. No, of like, break about the watch for one minute i'm like okay what the fuck does it matter what <laughs> what's your watch for one minute the 10th time you do the one minute Dude. that's important yeah i there's always like a line that i think people are gonna be like that i paid the person to uh say that so that is like the yeah. outtake right there that is that's awesome yeah. um what do you think do you have any really good habits or bad habits that affect your training and racing yeah i saw that so so the good habit is that i'm very consistent okay uh you know and i i remember but but that's also something which can go you know it's a bell in the, it can go too far so i've i've had years you know like the sunday when i arrived in paris i started already to think about the vuelta espana mm. well i was like okay it might be better would have been good to think about the vuelta maybe uh, after a week or something and just go for yourself, gain some weight and blah blah blah. But the uh, but the good thing is that the, the consistency and also the 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 discipline to work hard is there, you know. And mm. that also helps me in uh, in the entrepreneur side of life, you know, because there's nobody who is telling you what you have to do when you're mm-hmm. an entrepreneur, because you have to make your own business. And that's also with cycling, or at least it used to be like that with cycling. And now, as a gravel pro or privateer, it's the same. Uh, nobody's telling me when I have to train, you know, or what I have to do. It it, it, it comes all for my own, um, for my own, uh, for my my inside. But sometimes when I look back, that was also bringing me maybe too far in the too skinny part or the training too much part or not enjoying life too much part. Which so the lift slow balance also needs to be there, and that's uh, that's where I have to be conscious of. That's awesome. What do you? Uh, you know, you're supreme badass. Do you ever have points where you're feeling like, man, I'm not super fast right now. Like you have some self doubt or, you know, you're going in some big races and like, how does your, how do you use mindset? If, if you do yeah. as like a positive thing to, you are obviously like, since you're an entrepreneurial guy, you are going to be that self-motivated and able to like, you know, pick yourself up by the bootstraps, they say. But, you know, I think we all get in funk sometimes. We all get yeah, yeah, how do you deal with that? What's a good like thing that helps you out? Yeah, the best thing is racing, yeah, and yeah. Uh, have a result. And, there you uh, go. Uh, yeah. So, so how would you do? So, do you? So, some athletes though they really struggle with that because they're like, "Well, I'm not ready to race." I had a guy who was like, "I think I might start entering races." I'm like, "Yeah, why wouldn't you?" He's like, "Well, I don't know if I'm ready." I'm like, "Dude, you're ready. Everybody's ready. You're gonna learn so much yeah. about racing. Go race. Yeah. Have fun, and don't yeah. don't." You know, check your ego at the I, that, uh, That's what I speak to a lot. Lo- I speak a lot with the young guys in the pro peloton still, you know. They, they're they still my friends like Sam Oman, the guys from Jumbo. And and I think, to be honest, that's something 
what are, they are missing nowadays because they turned pro young and when they were amateur they were used to race every week mm-hmm. right because when you're amateur you go from race to race to race still the national championships with this mid-year mm-hmm. they have two weeks rest and they race and race and race till the end of september that's how it you race as an amateur mm-hmm. then they turn pro when they're 22 years old and suddenly they race Paris, uh, Paris Nice, for example, if they're allowed to start. And then they have to wait till Romandi with, uh, for another race, which is four weeks. Normally it would have been three weekends of racing. And now they don't know how to fill in that time, you know, because, mm-hmm. and then they go in altitude and stuff like that. But racing, you also have to learn. You have to learn the tactics, but also the legs. I don't know for you, but if I was racing a lot, somehow I could push an extra gear after a week of, of Paris Nice. The week after, I won a uh, stage in Criterium International because, yeah, the legs were just... It's, it's something you can't reproduce by training. And the thing is that when they turn pro, they start to race less, which is actually strange mm-hmm. because of nowadays in the pro peloton, it's more about training. So I spoke to Pascal Eichhorn in my podcast lately. You talk about yeah, self-doubt. So he, he, he fucked up the classics, basically. Or it was not as good as he wanted to be. And Team Jumbo Fisma was also expecting more from him. I said, when is your next race? He said, in six weeks. I said, that's a long period of self-doubt then. Yeah. You know, if your next race is in two weeks and you start to feel better, race can build from that, from race to race. It's a lot better than the last week like six weeks ago you fucked up and you still have to try to to go for for uh for something better in the in the next race which, which takes six weeks to wait for you can race again so that's such a good point it's so hard to go back and hit it in training when you're like i suck like i just got my ass yeah. kicked now i gotta go kick my own ass in training that's yeah, a really exactly. good point like go back and race like find some redemption and even if you don't go and win the race like just go have a good showing you know no 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 I'm so glad I was not a triathlete because they only race twice a year, you know. Or, Insane. Or I would I would go crazy, yeah. Dude, let me uh I got two more questions for you if that's cool. I know we're coming yeah. up on an hour here. What's do you see any um so I mean I guess the different squads were like Rabobank to Blanco, Belkin, still the same group yeah, of everybody. Same, same group, yeah. Yeah. So but over the years, like was there any um anything that you had to like adapt to as Maybe it was simply because you were getting more mature in your racing and becoming more of like a leader and really like being the, like you helped Tom and you're like his yeah. super sidekick. What, what kind of like did you have to adapt to as you grew through the sport of cycling or um, things you just saw changing that like? Yeah, you, you start to, so, so when I started, it was at small teams. The, the thing I got to adapt to the most was maybe the popularity from the from the from mm-hmm. the people outside. You know, like at first I could walk through my town without being noticed, and then I did some tour de France, and people start to stare at you and start to talk to you and stuff like that. So, it was not maybe from the team, but from the outside. Well, I was thinking I was still the same person, but. Also in racing, uh, I, I think that's the thing Tom Dumoulin was, was difficult for him. Uh, I don't know if you remember, but when he came home from his Giro win, there were like 50 journalists in front of his house and he tweeted something like, fuck off, this is my house, you know? Like, yeah. Uh, so so I, had, I won't say it was the same scale, but I had the same feeling. So the, uh, also sometimes, you know, especially the difficult years when ra- riding bikes was not cool because it was all dopers and stuff like that. Uh, but to be in, yeah, in a team, of course, you grow more mature and you start to the younger people while uh, the younger riders, well, at first you were the younger rider, you know. Mm-hmm. So that makes uh, things different. But yeah, to be honest, I always... Uh, yes, so we farm. So I always did my own thing, you know, because of course I was also in teams where they look at you like oh, uh, the, the guy is living in the US, but he's racing in Europe, and how how are things working out like that and stuff like that. So teams are always looking to you, and also it's good when you do your own thing when you have good results, but when you have bad results. They 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 like you to form more mm-hmm. follow more their 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 rules or guidelines in training or this you know whatever you know. For example, I always went 
uh, on altitude towards Turkey. Well, the team went to share Nevada because I was like, okay, I like to be in Turkey. I like to be in a city. But I had to make sure I had the good results because right. when tw- two years in a row I was not making results, they also said, okay, next time you go to the Shera because it's not working for you. Mm-hmm. So uh, maybe I should have adapted more, but I I refused. I, I just tried to be myself and uh, to stay Lawrence. Yeah. I think, Dude, I think that's the way to go. I mean, I think authenticity to yourself and your training and your racing, it's going to make you the best version of you. It's Exactly. You know. And also to look back, I can be proud of what I did on my terms, you know, instead of maybe bite your tongue for a few years and make some more money. But then you look back like, okay, those years were not the nicest. And right now, when I, I always was like, when I don't like it anymore, I start to change things. So mm-hmm. when I didn't like the power meter in 2010 anymore, I just said, I'm not riding with it anymore for mm-hmm. one year. I just throw it off, you know, like. No files for me this year. I just do my thing and, I, and I'll and i show you I can do it without. And the the next time was when I didn't like it anymore. In 2015, I just went to the U.S. and started to do gravel riding and mountain biking and also do things without a power meter because they were not on those bikes. And, but still, I had good results. And then, then you need to make good results because otherwise next year you're fired, you know? So uh, <laughs> I... Uh, I put my uh, my ass on the line, but it worked out. Yeah, yeah it worked out. I'm glad you didn't get fired. That's good. That's good. Uh, Last question for you. Do you ever uh, lift or like cross train? Or are you always on the bike? Uh, I used to do that. Uh, but, uh, but now time-wise, mm. because I have less time on my, you know, it could be the second training. Same with core, you know, like mm-hmm. uh, same, uh, uh, probably every... A trainee tells you I, I should do it more, but uh, it's the same for me now, you know, like the time I have, I try to spend on the bike, but before I did it, I had my own weight room in my house always, you know, I, and then the year I was living in Santa Cruz, I had a subscription unlimited, so I believe in it, but when you just have 15 hours, better spend those 15 hours on the bike, you know, if you have 30 hours, you mm-hmm. can leave five in the weight room, but if yeah. you have 15 hours, I spent them on the bike. Pedal the bike. Fair enough. Yeah. Dude, Lawrence, this is incredible, man. Okay, You're a cool. beast. I hope we cross paths on a gravel. Do you, yeah, do you own too. any road bikes anymore? I, I Yeah, I still have two, basically. Okay. I, was, I, was, I, was, I, was, I was, today I was putting the power meter on one of them. <laughs> <laughs> Are you riding specialized on the road also? Yeah, yeah, I have an Ethos and a Roubaix, yeah. Okay, yeah. sick, dude. Yeah, and then a Diverge and an Epic, so bikes are good, all good. So everybody, check check him out, and you're on Insta. Are you, what are you on Instagram? Are you... Uh... Just Lawrence Tandem. Okay. Yeah, Lift Slow Ride Fast, LSRF, we got a bunch of ca- accounts, man. <laughs> yeah, man, check out, accounts, check out the accounts, check I'll post them down there, I'll look them all, I'll get the tags okay. there. <laughs> You guys need, I was actually looking at the clothing, I like the LSRF, but you also yeah, yeah. have one that spells it out, because, like, it's a good slogan. Yeah, yeah, we, we, got the, we got the merch for the... Uh, oh, the do you have one that says Lift? Do you have it? Yeah, yeah, we got it. Yeah, yeah. I might have missed everything. that. I'll have to check it out. I like the fun, I like the skinny tall. Fun. And next week the the summer collection arrives. It's going to be cool. Yeah, Boom! Everybody, cool. cop some of that. <laughs> Yo, dude, thanks, man. Much okay. Yeah. It. And I'll tag okay. you when I post. It's probably in a couple of weeks, and uh, cool. We'll go from there. I'll buy you a coffee or something next time I see you. No worries. Thanks, dude. Yeah. Have a great day. Bye bye. Ciao, ciao. See ya. Yo.